in the prehistoric in the most ancient world they they also recognize that the sun's coming back bringing life back to the northern hemisphere so they had a celebration of spring and it was in the bible it's in the scriptures it's called the marriage feast of cana and we all heard uh, christians have heard the story about jesus going to the marriage feast of cana and the idea of the marriage feast, who was getting married at the marriage feast? Who was getting married? Well, God the Father was marrying Mother Nature. That's what is referred to as the marriage feast of Cana, because it was an old Canaanite story, an old ancient Canaanite story called the marriage feast. And the marriage feast was the official marriage between God the Father and Mother Earth, Mother Nature. And God the Father, when he marries Mother Nature, is going to obviously impregnate her so that new life can come into the world. So God the Father is going to marry Mother Earth or Mother Nature, and there's going to be a marriage feast because you can't have God the Father running around impregnating uh, his wife, unless there's a marriage feast, unless there is an actual marriage. You can't have him just, you know, uh, reproducing without a marriage. And so this is why there's an official marriage feast called the Marriage Feast of Cana. It's an old, ancient Canaanite story. And the story is basically that in the spring, the summer, in the spring, will bring back life into the earth. God the Father is going to marry Mother Earth, Mother Nature. And and how and and, and of course after the marriage feast is going to be uh, a, a reproduction of life. And so Mother Earth is going to be pregnant and she's going to give birth to new life now. Why? Because God the Father and her got together and now she's going to have offspring. <clears throat> and so what, what are you talking about? Well, it's very simple. It's a symbolic story that God the Father is going to impregnate Mother Earth after the marriage feast is, is concluded. And so what are you talking about? Well, in, in ancient India, there was a God, there was a word for God in the ancient India called, this God was called Rain, R-A-I-N. Rain was the name of a, of a God in, in ancient India. And so today when God the Father reigns on Mother Earth, it's, the rain was perceived to be the, a uh, uh, life-giving liquid coming from the Father. The life-giving flow of liquid coming to the Mother Earth during the marriage feast or after the marriage feast is over, God the Father is impregnating Mother with the sacred fluid, the fluid of life. And the fluid of life was the water. And so therefore, God the Father is now impregnating Mother Earth with the rain. And the rain was a name for God in the ancient Hindu. There was an, uh, either one God or the concept of God. But I remember seeing that many years ago, rain, R-A-I-N. So today, when you see the water flowing from the heavens, coming from God the Father up in heaven, and the water is falling to the earth, Mother Earth, Mother Nature will be impregnated with water, and now she's going to give birth to new life, new plants, new animals. Everything's going to be clean and new. So that's where we get the idea of Mother Earth being impregnated by Father God, God the Father, at the marriage feast of Cana, and it happens in spring. And so today we still have our spring weddings. That's typical of Europe and the European people, of which we Americans are. We are still having the idea of a of a spiritual wedding between man and woman, between male and female in Today in the spring, so we have spring weddings where mother is going to marry God the father. <clears throat> so we have spring weddings, and of course after the spring weddings there's going to be reproduction of life because that's what the animals are doing. That's what the animals are doing in spring. They're reproducing, and the plants are reproducing, and anything that's alive is reproducing. They're all reproducing. 
Why? Because thank God the Son has come back. God's Son, the light of the world, said he would return. He promised he would return, and he did. And now we got life back again, and now we can enjoy life again because the sun is going to get really warm until the first day of the summer where it's really hot. And then later on, he's really hot, and then, of course, he'll cool off, typical of the sun, will cool off, and then he will fall in the fall, and he's not as hot as he used to be, and now he's going to fall even further down into uh, the southern hemisphere where he will actually die to us in the northern hemisphere. We're going to, well, we don't have the sun anymore. It's gone. It's freezing cold up here and ice everywhere. And thank God he will return, though. And every year he always returns. And so that's what Christianity was all about. It was referred to as the celebration of the invincible sun. The sun was invincible. You could not overthrow the power of God's sun. He will come back. Every year he comes back and brings new life and new warmth and food and a new life to the to the human family in the northern hemisphere. That's the basis for the symbolic story called Christianity. Mm. It has to do with all of the normal uh, movements of the sun during the year with the 12 apostles or the 12 signs of Joseph, the 12 brothers of Joseph or the 12 tribes of Israel. And I just cringe when I hear people talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. There was no 12 tribes of Israel. It's just a story. Mm-hmm. It's just a story. That's why the Bible is called the greatest story ever told. It's not the greatest collection of historical facts ever published. It's the greatest story ever told. It's nothing but a story. The 12 signs of the, of the zodiac as what's being talked about when you talk about the 12 signs of, of the zodiac are the 12 brothers of Joseph, the 12 apostles, the 12 uh, prophets of, of Israel, the 12 major prophets, the 12, uh, the 12 stones on the breastplate of the high priest. Everything is done in sequence of 12. Why? Because that's the way the world works. Mm. It's a 12-step program. You start in the first grade and you end up in the 12th grade. So it's a 12-step program. Whether you're an alcoholic or not, it's still a 12-step program. (laughs) Life is a 12 steps. That's why you have 12 apostles. The 12 apostles are the 12 months of the year represented by 12 major constellations of the zodiac. And the zodiac obviously is there only because it's important to us because of the sun. And the sun has four lives, uh, spring, summer, autumn, winter, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Four, the four gospels are telling you the story of God's son. So the bottom line at the end of the day is quite simply, there was no Jesus. He never existed. But it is a very powerful, encoded, symbolic metaphor story, which right. basically is telling the world of mankind the same thing it told the ancient peoples of the world. It's still telling us today the same story, that there is a war on the earth between light and darkness, mm-hmm. between the coming of the sun that brings light and warmth and energy and food and flowers and everything wonderful for human life comes into the world when the sun rises each morning. He is our risen Savior. Of course, the sun is your risen Savior. If it don't come up, we're going to be dead in three weeks. The earth is going to be frozen over. So therefore the sun is your risen Savior and he is the, and he is a triune God. Father, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he's a child when he's born. He's full-grown adult at 12 noon, and he's an old man who's going to die at night. And so it's the same son. There's only one God. It's a son God. So there's only one God but three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So one God but three persons. Yeah, the one God is the baby in the morning, the newborn son at 12 noon, he's, he's fully matured, and at, at 6 o'clock at night, he's old and dying and leaving the world. And my God, he's going to leave the world 
in the hands of the prince of darkness, who was in Egypt, was called Set. Why? Because it gets dark at sunset. <clears throat> the entire story of the New Testament in the Bible is a metaphor, a symbolic story, which has been presented as actual history to the people of this world to control them, to frighten them, so that the boogeyman's going to get you when you die. And you're going to go to hell and you'll burn in hell forever. And that's what the kings believed. So that's why the Pope could dictate whatever he wanted that the kings to believe they would believe because he could condemn them to death. And when they died, they were going to burn forever in hell. And as I told you, I found out a long time ago when I was nine years old, you can't burn a spirit. 